Welcome to the 2021 Lifelong Recreation Travel Program. I'd like to say it's nice to see you, but I guess I'll have to settle for it's nice to be seen by you. Uh, we are gradually returning to full programming. Our recreation centers are still at half capacity, so that's one of the reasons I'm not packing us all into a small room right now. But the, the gradual re-entry of travel is happening. And what I'm gonna to try to do here is share my screen with you and show you what we've got on the agenda. So we are starting with a real gradual re-entry and you'll see that. Remember the things that I called field trips that were very local, mostly in Lawrence and Douglas County. That's what we're gonna be starting out with. We've had a few this spring and they've been fun and they've gone well. So here's a few of the parameters that you can expect as we get going. We're gonna stick with those local destinations. And the main reason for that is then we don't have to all share a bus or a van and, and, and all the air that is in it. So with local destinations, we can meet at the spot that we're going to be touring. As I start adding a little bit more distance, we'll have what I'm calling the convoy option. And that will be, we'll have a bus available and everybody can ride on that bus, or if you are more comfortable following the bus, if we're not going far, say Baldwin, Ottawa, then you are welcome to just follow along. At this point, I am still asking that people will wear masks on the bus, and that's just because it's still a fairly enclosed area. We know things are changing constantly. It's still a moving target, and I I remain optimistic, but I don't want to promise what anything will be like this fall, and of course, we'll be following the rules of any place that we visit. But for now, I'm going to ask that we wear masks on the bus and we'll also be sanitizing the bus between stops. And what that's going to entail is when the driver drops us off and the bus is empty, we have this ozone spray. And then after he sprays that, I'm gonna have him just roll down the windows and drive around and get everything aired out. That way we won't have our exhalations and we won't have the ozone spray. So, the meals, I've got good feedback from everyone. The early trips with the local destinations will not have any meal time on them. So that makes it easy. We don't have to think about that. And then you'll see as we start going a little further, our first trip to Ottawa, we will have lunch on our own so we can spread out and not be in a big group. And by the time we eat in Excelsior, we will be eating as a group, but in a separate area from the rest of the restaurant. So we will still be able to spread out. The trips that we have that are full days have open time. And that was already part of the itinerary for those trips. But again, then we can spread out, do our own thing with one or two friends and may hopefully feel comfortable with that. Finally, how to register. Um, pay attention on the slides because I'm always gonna have the code number. And if you have that code number, it's the easiest way to register. I will walk through the online registration process when I finish going over the trips for the fall, but also there will be a link to the PDFs if you want to print off uh, a written version of the trips that we're talking about or a registration form. You'll be able to do that at lprd.org or under this video, there should be a link. And finally, I will have paper versions, hand right in your hands versions, but in all the rec centers on Wednesday, June 9th. So hopefully one of those ways will um, work for you and we'll get everybody signed up. As always, I encourage sign up, even if it says it's full, because if we get a wait list and there's enough to go twice, we'll go twice. So let me go ahead and get started and tell you about some of the things that we have coming up this summer and fall. The first is forest bathing. And forest bathing is something we've actually been doing this spring in a, sort of an abbreviated version. It is, it's a great way to hit the reset button after this past year that we've had. Um, Shannon Gores is a certified forest therapy guide. And what these are are slow meditative walks. There's specific practices for relaxation and awareness. And she's, when she did it this um, spring with us, we did short walks, uh, an hour and a half long at different outdoor locations. 
this one is going to be what she considers a full session of three hours out at Lone Star Lake. And I can tell you that they always start with um, a guided meditation and then some slow walking. There'll be a, a sharing time and then some time on your own. There's always a, a chair or a way to sit down. You don't have to sit cross-legged on the ground. And then she always ends it with a tea ceremony and she makes her own teas. And frequently the plant is related to the area you're walking through or the subject of the meditations. She really puts a lot of thought and structure into this. Uh, because it's added separate locations, she will send an email. She sends a very detailed email about what to expect and where to meet uh, a few days before you actually have the forest bathing session. So that is going to be forest bathing at Lone Star Lake on Tuesday, June 29th at eight in the morning before it gets too hot. And the class code for that is 327473. The next trip is actually one that we're kind of repeating. This is one of those, we don't know what we have here in Lawrence kind of things. Uh, years ago, when I first started this job, I was looking through Discover Magazine, reading about uh, this research about the ice sheets and the polar research to determine melting and sea level change and all of that. And all of a sudden I realized that the place they were talking about was in Lawrence. And then I thought, wait, I know somebody who works here. And it's a fascinating and really difficult thing for me to explain because I'm not a scientist. But what they're doing is they're developing the technologies and they're doing the field investigation. So they're doing the research and the technology here in, in Lawrence. And then they are going to the poles and doing field work to determine just how the, the outlet glaciers and the ice streams are changing and what the response is going to be for that climate change impact. It's really interesting. It'll be a small group. The last time we went, we did both a, a meeting with some of the researchers, and then they took us down to the area where they create the equipment and how they get it into the, uh, the planes that they get from the government. It's really, we're so lucky to have some of these things, and this is a chance to see that. So that's CRESIS, the Center for Remote Sensing of Ice Sheets, and it's gonna be Thursday, August 12th at one o'clock in the afternoon. And the code number is 427806. And then a topic that really got shorted last year. Last year was the centennial of women's suffrage when women got the vote nationwide and there were all these wonderful events planned, including this. And of course, everything got tabled. Um, Kansas is a really interesting place to talk about the suffrage movement because women in Kansas had the vote eight years before it was approved nationally. And so we were leaders in the idea and a lot of Lawrence area and Kansas women were very involved in that fight. Now, our guide is Jen Klein and she was, oh, she's been at the theater department at KU for over 30 years. She's uh, worked both with the Kansas Humanities Council and the local historical society in presenting about suffragists and about the whole movement. So she's going to be our guide. I can guarantee you she'll be informed and entertaining with her background. And she has researched 22 women here in Lawrence. And we're going to go up to Oak Hill Cemetery, which is our historic cemetery, on two nights because it'll um, be a long talk. And we'll do 11 people each night. And we're doing it in the evenings, again, to avoid the heat of the day. I am happy to say that part of uh, the fees for this are going to be donated to the Friends of Oak Hill a group that is dedicated to preserving the old cemetery and keeping its history alive. So that is suffragists in Lawrence, a walking tour that will have chairs available. And the code is 327476. And then one more kind of local uh, stop, and that is the Lawrence Theater Lawrence, what I still mistakenly call Lawrence Community Theater. We're calling this Backstage Pass because I actually was lucky enough to usher a few times there and learned all these little things that are going on behind the scenes. And I think that theater is like anything else. When you try to learn to play the guitar, you really appreciate a good guitar player. Or if you try to paint a faux finish, you see it done well. That's the same thing with theater. When you see everything that goes into putting on a good production, you really appreciate 
the work that it is. And what's going to be unique about this is we're going to have some hands-on opportunities. We'll get to learn some paint techniques in the set studio. We get to go through the costume shop and maybe even learn a couple easy routines in the dance studio. So all of this will give us an appreciation of what goes into a successful performance. And I encourage you, if you're not available for this, just uh, check out Theater Lawrence online. They have been very creative in how they've responded to COVID with outdoor performances and movies and live shows. It's, it's really impressive. So backstage pass at the Theater Lawrence will be on Tuesday, August 24th. I don't have the time there, but it's gonna be at 1.30 and the code is 327-477. Then finally, we're leaving town. Now, for the next two trips, what I've done is I've kind of dusted off two that we had ready to go in 2020 and they were very popular. They had a, a big sign up, so I thought that this would be a good start for us. They also are both a relatively short drive, so we won't be spending a lot of time in the bus. And it falls under the old heading of sometimes we don't know what we have nearby. So earlier this spring, I went through Ottawa on a trip and was so happy to see all the businesses we had planned to visit were still in business. And that just made me happy. And of course, one of those is the Plaza 1907 Cinema. They have been in operation. Well, they went through the first uh, flu pandemic in America since 1907. And it's the oldest continually operating movie theater in the country. They're gonna give us a little talk about that. We get to view The Great Train Robbery, which was the first American action film. And then they've created a really nice little memorabilia museum of different film memorabilia. Then we're just, we're gonna hang out downtown. And there's two stores that I particularly wanted to go to. One is Maggie's Popcorn and Nuts, and the other is the Goat Milk Soap Store. Both of these have stayed in business in part due to their good use of the internet and being able to ship their products. But we're gonna get them nice and fresh and we're going to do a little make and take at each one. Uh, the Goat Milk Store is gonna do a, a soap making demonstration for us. And then Maggie's will let us make our own flavored popcorn and, and take a little home with us. After we do those three stops, you're gonna go ahead and have uh, time on your own for lunch. There's quite a few restaurants downtown. And then time on your own to check out the shops. I've been told that the uh, bulk food store there is really impressive. And I know people who go down just to shop at the bulk food store. So we'll have about an hour and a half downtown, maybe two hours on your own. And then we're gonna go up to the historical museum at the old depot. As, as the end of our day. So that's gonna be on Wednesday, September 22nd. It'll be a full day. We'll leave about 9.30 and return a little after four. The code for that is 427-895. And the last uh, stop that we have planned right now is the, oh, I'm lying to you, it's the second to last stop, is the Jesse James Farm in Excelsior Springs. Jesse James fascinates me because he was such a celebrity. I used to live um, in a town, Northfield, Minnesota, and we had Jesse James days every year. And their claim to Jesse James was he had tried to rob their bank and failed. The locals were all armed and they stopped the bank robbery and they celebrated that every year. And then I come down here and I see Jesse James signs out on the interstate and they're celebrating because he lived here and the people celebrate because he robbed their bank. He had a charisma that seems to have made him the first anti-hero in America. So his um, home farmstead where he grew up is right outside of Excelsior Springs. So we're gonna go to the log cabin farmhouse that was built in 1822 and was the home of many generations of the James family. So we'll learn a little about him. They're gonna they have a movie museum and a visit to the original farmhouse. And after we tour that, we'll go into Excelsior Springs where we'll have lunch at the Ventana Grill. And then we're going to go to their little museum, history museum and the Hall of Waters, which is a beautiful art deco building where 
they celebrate the whole history of the mineral springs and the healing that has made them famous. After we tour those two museums, you'll have about two hours on your own because it's October, so it should be beautiful weather. The whole of Excelsior Springs is not that large and we're going to be right downtown. They have two very nice self-guided walking tours that will be available. Or if you're just interested in shopping, they have really good um, original artwork and um, artisans as well as some antique stores. So you'll have time to shop the downtown district or take a walking tour, whatever sounds good to you that afternoon. So that's uh, Jesse James Farm in Excelsior Springs on Tuesday, October 5th. And again, it will be a, a full day, probably 8.30 in the morning to about 5.30 that night. And the class code is 427-309. I told you I had lied. We have one more trip, and that's going to be a tree tour with John Standing down in Baldwin City. We're going to go to the Ivan Boyd Arboretum, which is right on the Baker University campus. And it is not a huge campus, you won't be doing a lot of walking, but it's a really dense experience for trees. Baker was the first university in the state to earn the Tree Campus USA distinction from the Arbor, ah, Arbor Day Foundation. They have 114 different native and ornamental trees. So we'll be um, touring that with John, learn a little bit about the biology, the horticulture, and of course, a little history. John has a way of making it interesting for everybody interest level. So that is the trees of the Ivan Boyd Arboretum. The colors will be lovely in October and it is not Maple Leaf Festival weekend so it won't be a crowd scene and the code for that is 427-471. And looking ahead there's a few other trips I'm really hoping to take but the destinations are finding it hard to commit yet because they're still not sure what their situation will be so I wanted to give you a little teaser and you will be on the list as soon as I get confirmation from them. One is that the Truman Presidential Library was scheduled to reopen after an extensive remodeling last year, and now they're, they're just waiting. They want to be sure before they open to large groups. And so I'm waiting to hear from them, and we will pair that with maybe a tour of the uh, Vail Mansion and a couple of other stops. Independence has a lot going on. And then when school begins again at KU, we're gonna have a tour at the Bales Recital Hall and a performance uh, from one of the students. So we'll be timing that tour with a recital. And if you've never been there, it's just lovely. And the acoustics, just, you can have an acapella singer at the front and it's perfect for every seat in the house. And then I'm watching all the holiday performances to see what's gonna be available either at Musical Theater Heritage or Resurrection Church doing their big program. We'll see what looks good and manageable, and I will keep you posted on that. That's what I have planned for right now. I hope that something sounds good to you. I hope it all sounds good to you. And do take the time to call me if you need to. My office number is 785-832-7909, or stop by, drop me an email, and I'd be happy to answer questions. If you're interested in signing up online, stick around for the next little bit and I'll just show you kind of what it will look like on the website so things are familiar to you. And remember that you can also um, pick up the paper copies at the recreation centers uh, starting Wednesday the 9th. So when you go to Lawrence Parks and Recreation, you, you can just type in LPRD org and it'll take you to this screen our home screen i'm going to show you there's a lot of ways to do things i'm going to show you the easiest way and the easiest way is that big red arrow there just click on online enrollment and that will take you to the next screen where you have four decisions to make four clicks the first is in that search box at the top you put in the activity number of the trip you're interested in just the number, no letters or sections after it, just the number. And click second, click that search button. Third, there'll be a little plus next to the description of the trip. You click on that plus, and then it will bring up that bright yellow bar at the bottom of the screen. Click add to cart. So it's just like shopping. 
Once you've done that, you're going to get this screen where you log in. If you already have a, an account with us, then you'll, you already have that information. If you need to create an account, you can do that as well. Just click on, uh, if you're a brand new patron, the third line down, click here to register for a new account. If you have any trouble call, sometimes I can reset the password and that makes it easier too. Then you're just going to click yes that you wanna do in this case, forest bathing. Click continue. There's your shopping cart, just like if you're shopping from Amazon, JCPenney or anyone else online and proceed to checkout and fill in your credit card information, which I have not sharing with you today. So I hope that this information helps get you excited to see us again and to join us. I'm looking forward to seeing you and we'll do so soon. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.